In the farmland of eastern Pennsylvania, it's not uncommon to see horse-drawn buggies. But one weekend during the year, Maple Grove Raceway roars with horsepower by the hundreds and some of the coolest custom cars around. This is the manufacturer Chevy Series, where GM products take center stage and take your breath away. From Camaros to Corvettes, Coupes to Cadillacs, General Motors takes command today on the Low Car Car Show, presented by ARP. This is Maple Grove Raceway, where the pits and the parking lots are filled with memorable rides from every era. I'm the owner of this 48 Chevy Aero sedan. It took about four and a half to five years to build the car. Originally bought the car out in California. It was all apart. I got out there. I'm usually a 32 Ford guy, but when I got out there, I got all these parts. I didn't know whether I had the whole car or not. I loaded it up into a 17-foot U-Haul and drove it back across country. And that's how I got the car back here. Uh, they had started doing some work out in California. They had started Pro Street in it. I didn't want Pro Street. I had had a Pro Street car. I didn't want that again. I had to find another frame. I bought another car out of Harrisburg, brought that down, basically took the car apart just to get the frame. Once I got the frame all together, then I bought a uh, 350 Chevy Ramjet, tune port motor, and then put that all together with a 700R4 transmission and a nine inch forward rear with uh, 350 gears and then uh, the overdrive 700R4. The interior, I usually use a guy up in Rhode Island and he does my interiors. I had a set of seats that I bought at Carlisle. They were like brand new, they were Cadillac seats, they were full power and heat and cool. And the guy told me they were probably out of a STS Cadillac. But when I started looking, all the STSs had a, what you call a French stitch. This had piping on the seats. So I went back to the guy and I said, hey, what's going on? He goes, well, they were probably out of a concept car. And sure enough, a couple years later, I go to a car show and you start looking at the cars and the new cars have contrasting piping around the seat to go with the interior. The front seats, basically the way they were, didn't reupholster those. They've still got the Cadillac emblem on the back of the seat. The front of the car, I used a 47 Olds grille and 04 Thunderbird headlights. And basically that's how we ended up with the front end that we got on the car now. The color is a Chrysler 02 uh, Prowler orange. Took about two gallons to get the, everything painted, the motor trans, and then the whole outside, get everything cut in and get the car painted. Real nice car, you know, pretty car. Beautiful car, you know, nice interior. Take a couple best in shows at some shows, and uh, yeah, I've, I've done okay with the car. With temperatures hovering near 100 degrees, this car-loving crowd sought out all sorts of cold refreshments to go along with all these cool cars. It's a 1951 Nash Statesman. The seats turn into a bed. It has his easy Ford Chevy 350, 350, 358 horsepower motor. This, this car was redone frame up seven years ago. It's built on a 65 El Camino chassis. It's rare and unique. It would probably be a good idea to buy so. I enjoy it. I take the car shows off every weekend. People pull up next to me, give me their thumbs up, they say I love your car. What the, my Corvette, I don't get any of that. But this, this is a great response to this car. It's no surprise to find V8s under almost every hood. That's just par for the course. This is actually, it started out as a 96 Easy Go golf cart. I modified it a little bit, uh, put a Chevrolet engine in it. It's got a 305 uh, HO. I'd been thinking about it for a while because a friend of mine said, you know, I bet you couldn't put a Chevrolet engine in a golf cart, but I built quite a few cars, mostly Chevrolets. It took me probably six months. I couldn't really figure out how to do it and, and keep the golf cart looking like a golf ball. So one day I was watching Stacy David's gears and he had a Haas fly. I don't know if you know what that is. It's a Chevy powered bar stool. And when I saw that, the light bulb went off. I can do that. There's probably less than a sixteenth of an inch between the headers and the easy go frame, but it did fit in there. And consequently, 
ended up a Chevy powered golf cart. Want to give your ride show and go quality? Check out this week's Low Car Lowdown. This week's Low Car Lowdown, Brian Downard with us from Low Car. I'll tell you what, drive-by wire is such a hot item right now. It really is. With, with all the crepe motors that are out there from Mopar, Chrysler, and GM, we've got a lot of different applications. We're also seeing applications now in the aftermarket with Holly, with mass performance. People like that are actually making their own drive-by wire and systems as well. So when we call Low Car and we want to get the drive-by wire, what is it that we receive? The actual thing you would order would be the module, and that will come with a harness that will either have a flying lead ends for it, or it'll have a, a weather pack connector. Most of our GM applications have a weather pack. All of our other applications are a flying lead and it gives you the, the instructions to handle that. And like with all the low car products you get a choice between the midnight finish or your bright finish. You can go on their website to find out more at lowcar.com. Remember made in the USA quality plain and simple. Part of the enjoyment of an event like this one is seeing well restored and pampered cars with decades of history. And when we come back to Maple Grove, we'll check out a Cadillac with a healthy dose of luxury mixed with some attitude. This edition of the Low Car Car Show is being brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GMA body parts and accessories. Car Capsule, protecting vehicles for over 20 years. And by Low Car, quality, plain and simple. Welcome back to Maple Grove Raceway and a bevy of Chevys. The dazzling display of show cars here this weekend is maintaining a long-standing tradition of excellence. The quality is by far uh, over the top. The cars over the years, the, the quality of them has grown significantly with the improvements the aftermarket's made. Uh, but the quality of the show cars themselves, every year, the, people keep stepping the, the quality of their cars. I keep saying quality, but unfortunately, that's what it is. Um, the cars just keep getting nicer and nicer every year. So I bring in, I have about six judges here uh, that, we, that I are part of my, my team. They come out, they judge the shows. I also bring a couple other workers to help keep things organized for the track so that people, when they pull in, they know exactly where they're going and keeps it smooth and running. Um, but I just kind of orchestrate as far as the judging crew and keeping things running smoothly on the car show end. Some of the GM gyms here today were saved from nasty environments. This car was found in the bottom of a barn underneath where the cow stayed. And it, half was inside and half was outside. And it was really in shambles. In fact, no one thought it was restorable. But I brought it home because I, I got a little bit of a background in working on old cars. And I decided to give it a chance. It was a retirement project. When I first got it home, my wife said, hurry up and throw a cover over it before the neighbors see it. It was that bad. But uh, as you can see, it came full circle from a car that was found in the rough and back to the way it is now. It's actually a, a, a PPG toner that we used instead of paint. It's what makes black paint, the pigment that makes black paint. The idea was to make sure that it was a comfortable, well-built, good riding, Car, and uh, we wanted to make sure that nothing was untouched. Late model 350, but it's done like the L79 Nova motor of the 70s. It has a small cam in it and uh, uh, some 9 to 1 pistons and uh, runs on a little better than pump gas and has about 340 horsepower and it, it goes down the road okay. The neat thing about the powertrain, it has a Tremec 5 speed and that's a 0.64 to 1 overdrive, so I can run 75 mile an hour at about 2200 RPMs. And my wife will say, all we gotta do is park it, and before you know it, somebody will come around and wanna know about it. Not far away in the field of classic cars is this classic family project. The 1954 Cadillac the Series 62 hardtop, my father and I did the entire restoration ourselves in our garage. My father painted the car, my father actually did the interior on the car, so it, it was a father and son project in our garage, it took us about three and a half years to complete it. 
The car, when I got it, was actually, I'm gonna say, decent. It sat in a loading dock in a factory in Pittston, Pennsylvania for, for a pretty long time. And the gentleman who owned it had passed away, owned it a long time, he only drove the car in parades. And we bought it from the loading dock in the factory. The star of it, of course, is the LS1. You know, the LS1's out of a 2004 Pontiac GTO. has a 4L60E, the automatic transmission. All the skirts in the front that you see were actually built by my father and I and it has a Camaro front section from an S79 Camaro Z28 from the front the firewall front. Uh, the interior is actually the factory. My wife doesn't say much, but she demanded that we have a full bench seat in it. So the actual seats are the original 54 Cadillac seats. And my father, believe it or not, bought a book on interiors, bought a sewing machine. That's the first interior he's ever done that we're gonna see. Probably one of the biggest questions I get asked about the Chrome, where I got it done. Um, and I got most of it done in, uh, in Texas from Southern Chrome. And all the chrome on the front of the car, which of course is, is basically, that, that's your bang shot, has been replaced. The rear bumper has been completely replaced. A lot of the side moldings, rocker moldings, are original to the car. And I did score some NOS pieces here and there on, on eBay. So most of it has been replaced, but a lot of it is actually with, was, was with the car when I got it. My father brought up the Grave Senior, which is the magic behind the paint. And uh, it's called Galaxy Grey Metallic in House of Color. And yes, my father has countless, countless, countless hours of block sanding that, priming it, blocking it, priming it to get it as straight as what it is. I bought the car in 2010, as I said, in Pittston. It took us about three and a half years, not working steady off and on to actually complete the car. Every kid should enjoy time with their dad. And that, that's, the, that's the best part of this car is that my father and I did it. And other than that, you know, trophies, winnings are great, but you know, time spent with my dad, that's it. That's what it's all about. Race cars always draw attention, even when they're standing still. And when we come back to the Low Car Car Show in the Chevy Manufacturer Series, we'll turn our attention toward a class of race car that has to have plenty of street smarts. Welcome back to the Low Car Car Show Series, presented by ARP. Here at Mabel Grove Raceway, the action on the track ranges from nostalgia nitro burning funny cars, to blazing swift jet propelled dragsters, and on to tire smoking machines that are at home both on the track and on the highway. This is the world of true street. The Maple Grove has continued to grow year after year. Last year we had a record at 40 cars. This year we reset it at 48. What's unique about True Street is they have to go on a highway cruise for 9.2 miles, come back in, line up, make three back-to-back -back runs. They can't lift the hoods up. They can't do anything to the cars. It's just an amazing phenomenon how fast these cars are. And knowing they just came off the street after a nine-mile run, it's just the fans love it. For over 60 years, Corvettes have walked the tightrope between being a car you use to compete and a car you enjoy on the street. Some play both roles. Well, this is a 1966 uh, Corvette Coupe. Came with a 427, 450 horse originally. We bought the car, wife and I, brand new in 66. When we started having kids, it was time to get rid of the car. We sold the car. When we stopped having kids in 82, decided it was time to find another car. I had a friend that said, uh, if you give me the VIN number, or maybe I can find the old one for you. He did that for us. We found it in 1982 in a town called Yardley, PA. We've had it since. Uh, came back with a number of issues. Big block motor was taken out and replaced with a small block. The interior was in disarray. Uh, one of the fellows had left the windows open for a winter, and it filled with water, rotted the carpets. There's, a lot that had to be done. We just enjoyed it a little bit at a time on the weekends until we got through years of college and weddings with our children. And then uh, once that ended, we decided that we would restore the car. Prior to doing that, I got a lead through a friend of mine that had a big block that was identical to what was taken out of my car uh, by the third owner. Uh, I managed to make a deal with him and bought that. It was preceding my car build date by just six weeks. No way we'll ever get closer than that. We bought it. We're happy to have it back and uh, <laughs> we uh, just enjoy it each time we come out. And this is another one of those events. 
Some Corvettes here this weekend have racing hardwired into their DNA, such as this record breaker that still carries its stock identification tag from the factory. First of all, it's a real 53 Corvette. A lot of people get upset about that, but the idea of it is, I bought this car in 1990, so it was a long time ago, and I bought it out of the back of Hemmings magazine for $800, so that gives you an idea of what it looked like. And I have pictures of it in the back of what it looked like. It was just a carcass body. But I ran this street called Outlaw Street Class, and it had to be a real car with a real VIN tag, one that was on the street at, at, you know, at one time. And that's why we used this body. Of course, we added a top to it. It's got a hard top off a of 57 on it. But it's a real 53 that's been lengthened five inches right in the back of the front fenders. And the rest of it's all pretty much stock, the body is. And this was actually the first car to go in the sixes at 200 with street legal tires because the class I ran was called Outlaw Street Class. And the car had to be street legal, also a real, like I said, a real car at one time. It had to pass Maryland State Inspection, wherever it was from, it had to pass. This car even passed emissions test. But uh, it had an 813 Sunny's motor in it and it's got an automatic in it, but it was the first car to go into sixes at 200. This is 20 year old paint. It was painted in 1995, and that's the same paint that was on it originally. We didn't change anything. I sold it in 1998 when I was world champion with it in 98, and uh, I built a twin turbo Firebird. Unfortunately, at the time, I had to sell one car to build the new one. So I sold it and always wished I hadn't sold it, so I kept track of it from 98 until last year I found it and I bought it back. It was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So we changed the motor and the hood scoop. The rest of the car is exactly the same except the tires. Exactly it was, you know, 20 years ago. Many Chevrolets from the 50s felt the pulse of high performance. And they're the heartbeat of many of today's street rods and classics. But others from that era took a more sedate approach. When we come back, we'll show you an Impala that has a concourse winning bloodline. This edition of the Low Car Car Show is being brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Condor, security, support, and transport. Clamp type, the clamp making tool. And by Low Car, quality, plain, and simple. Welcome back to Maple Grove Raceway, where today's Chevy Fest is a feast for the senses. In one corner of the show sits a row of the event's big cars, titans from a time gone by. But one of these machines is road-going royalty. 1958 Chevy Impala Coupe. And uh, I had a brand new one in 58 when I was 17 years old. And I retired from the local electric company and I decided to get another one. So I bought this and redid it to the correct standards of what it should be in 58. I had it two weeks and then tore it all apart. Every nut and bolt has been replaced on this car. Paint job, that's all Sherwin Williams. I call it house paint because it's Sherwin Williams. But there's five coats of acrylic urethane on that. The interior is identical to being what they had when it was brand new. A lot of people say that uh, you shouldn't have an interior. I said, yes, I should. Don Gartless did a job on this car. When he interviewed it up here a couple years ago, he called the interior gaudy. <laughs> but that's the original interior, as you'll see if, when you get over there. Uh, it's gotten super Chevy a couple times. The editor's choice here at uh, Maple Grove. I've gotten the General Motors Heritage Collection Award for the best Chevy in the country in 2008. The AACA's Chocolate Town Award as the best car on the field in Hershey in 2010 out of 3,000 cars, which isn't too bad. The hardest part was trying to get the interior. Because the interior for these things, you just can't go to Pep Boys and buy it. <laughs> so I had, I had bought an interior that it was starting to show its age after about 15 years. So I had uh, purchased another one. And the company I bought it from sent it to me, but it was pink. Terrible times to get the right interior from them. And it took me about two years and a lawyer to do it. But it's right and it's correct and it's installed in there perfectly. Everything else in the car is all as per standard as it should be. Oh, I drive it everywhere. It's, that's why it's got the wheels on it, because so, so you can drive. It's been, I've driven it to Indianapolis, it's been around the racetrack at Indy, it's been around the racetrack at Charlotte. I've driven it to uh, Richmond, or around that racetrack, and to Dover. Uh, I've got a picture of John Force 
leaning on the fender eating a hamburger at, at Dover. He's, he's telling people, anybody wants to buy this car, tell Betty, give him $10,000 and I'll take it. I said, I don't think so, John. <laughs> oh, I've had a lot of fun with this thing. It's, it's been my life's work, you know, trying to get this thing to where it is. And you're never done. If you have a car, you know yourself. It's never finished. Not all of the cars from the 50s were pampered. Some were workhorses that have found a second life. This is a 1955 Chevrolet sedan delivery with windows. They made 300 of them. And I actually found it on the internet. It was on um, eBay. A man had a bunch of them and he wanted to sell them. And I went out and looked at it and found it. I liked it because it was a wagon and you go to all these shows and there's the Chevelles, the Mustangs, and everything. I wanted something that nobody else had. It was painted, uh, the interior was in it, but it sat in the warehouse for three years. It needed, needed a lot of cleanup work. I did a lot of work underneath the engine as far as the, the chrome and stuff like that. I had to put another front end under it. The paint was about like an orange peel, so we worked on, I've been working on that constantly for a couple years now. In the sun it looks copper and the shade looks red. It's what they call tropical red with a cream white. It's got the 350 Chevrolet engine, four wheel disc brakes, 700 R transmission, stock 30, 309 rear. Pretty much you can get any part for the vehicle itself. The interior was like that when I bought it. I changed the carpet, it had tan carpet in it and I went to black because the tan showed too many footprints in it. And I wasn't into that, all that cleaning when I first got it. So I put black carpet in there just clean up the chrome and, and the dash and everything else, but the dash was as rough as the, the outside was. I drive it everywhere. I drive it, drove it from Baltimore to here. I wouldn't hesitate to drive it from here to Ocean City right now. I, it drives great. Gets about 15 miles a gallon with, it, with the tr transmission in the rear. Uh, I, I would not hesitate to drive it anywhere you want to go. So that winds up this week's edition of the Low Car Car Show. Be sure to join us next time when we bring you along to the 46th annual gathering of the National Street Rod Association in Louisville, Kentucky. See you then.